watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. With 75 years in broadcasting, we've covered everything, including our sports scene. In this throwback special, we look back at Padres spring training over the years. Let's start back in 1979. The Padres were coming off their first ever winning season in Major League Baseball. Spring training was in Yuma, Arizona. Not the most popular spot for players, but our Ted Leitner was able to get them to open up in a way you just don't see much these days. And as you'll also see, that's just one of many things that have changed. We just mix in an occasional mint and julep and we have cookies and milk before Betty Bye. <laughs> and that's on an exciting night at the Padre Spring Training Camp in Yuma, Arizona. To the players, Yuma is strictly a four letter word. Those I spoke with who have been with other teams and other training sites in both Florida and Arizona consider Yuma, Arizona, no offense, the absolute pits. Padres are probably wise to choose a spring training site that isn't, oh, exactly Las Vegas in terms of its distractions. I mean, the exhibition games for the players become the highlight of the six weeks. The rest of the time is pretty much fundamentals and then uh, the nightlife, if you can find it. Because it consists here in good old one horse town Yuma, of basically movies, not exactly first run, a main drag that is fast food heaven, and bars, lots of them, mostly small, loud, and well, sleazy. Relief pitcher John DeAquisto is a good case in point, a native San Diegan who spent seven years with the Giants training in Arizona, then with the St. Louis Cardinals in Florida, now with the Padres in Yuma. A young bachelor ball player who likes entertainment, but for him, what is there to do in Yuma? Not much. <laughs> not much at all. Uh, there's not very much to do here at all, Ted. <laughs> uh, it's like you know, there's been the old stereotype thing comes out. Oh, well, the ball players are back here in Yuma for another year of uh, craziness. And, you know, it, it's like, you know, when you're single, you know, you tend to like to go out on dates every once in a while. But uh, here, uh, that's kind of limited. Uh, you tend to learn how to play guitar quite well. Uh, uh, card games are really good. Uh, you know, it just it becomes a, a, at a point where you're just, uh, you know, got a lot of time on your hands a lot of time <laughs> hey I don't mean to be knocking the city of Yuma but I look for a ball player any ball player who liked a spring training B Yuma C both of the above and found nobody nobody young nobody old sometimes you want a little peace and quiet uh, this is a good place to get it in Yuma Arizona folks <laughs> Gaylord Jackson Perry He's been going through spring trainings longer than some of the Padres have been alive. 20 years of it, going back to 1958, his first camp. It's a well-known story as he approaches this year's in Yuma for the Padres that last year, at age 40, he won 21 games for the Padres, the Cy Young Award, and recorded his 3,000th career strikeout. Got a man there, a champ with the one hand. All right. How about champ? This is Roger Craig's first full spring training as the Padre manager. It was, in fact, Wednesday of this week, the anniversary of his hiring after Alvin Dark's firing last season. Craig is loose, unlike Dark, very close to his players, what baseball people like to call a player's manager. His popularity makes spring training a little more bearable. One of the problems of spring training is to keep it interesting for the players. I mean, it gets dull after six weeks of fundamentals. So you have to have someone who's a little bit crazy to kind of keep things uh, moving. The Padres have that someone. <laughs> <laughs> nice pitch, Lolo. Doug Rader, one-time Major League third baseman, full-time Padre coach, long-time strange person. Uh, if Craig is loose, Rader is practically coming apart. His escapades as a player are the stuff of legends. He is a little more serious now as a coach, but still a lot more like Tommy Smothers than Tommy Lasorda. Watch your lips. Attaboy, bury your hot, kid. Cookies and milk in your locker. 
Now, you had a heck of a reputation as a player. Did you fully earn all those things that they said that you did? Did you do them all or most of them? Yeah. Well, I did probably more than they wrote about them. The, the things that were put in print were the only ones they could get away with. Freddie. Freddie. Freddie Cat Nakua. Exactly four and a half minutes. Front, yeah. Well! I got it. <laughs> Perfect. I invented that play. Nice play, kid. You got it going today. The whole lifestyle of baseball gets in your blood, and it's almost uh, it's almost uh, something I don't think that I'll ever get out of my system. I'm kind of restless anyway. And, uh, you know, it gets, gives me an opportunity to, to spread myself around. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to talking with Raider, we did do the standard spring training interviews, not only with the Padres in Yuma, but other teams in Arizona and Florida. But you don't want to see those. I mean, spring training interviews are always the same, with the same cliches over and over, year after year. So to save time, we eliminated the interviews and kept the cliches. He did a, a great job for us last year. He doesn't have the range, but he knows how to play. Baseball's baseball. Okay. What we have to do is kind of stay free from injuries, and your talent will take care of the rest. We're a very good ball club. Very deep ball club. I don't see anyone that could beat us. The uh, odds-on favorite. We've got a very fine pitching staff. They're the best staff in, in baseball. It looks good on paper. We have a lot of new faces. We have to play good baseball. How do you play good baseball? Play good defense. Try to stay mentally prepared. Part of the winning attitude. I can't wait to get to the ballpark every day. This game means everything in the world to me. Who wants to hear it? Who cares? <laughs> and that more or less, is what's happening in spring training with the Padres. Ted Leitner, News 8, Yuma, Arizona. Oh, man. In 1984, spring training was still in Yuma, and the Padres were wearing maybe the worst uniforms in club history. Jim Lazlovic made the trip to the desert home of the Friars, where hope was supposed to spring eternal. And the thing is, after two seasons in a row of going only 500, this was the year that hope would blossom into success. We're going to work at a backhand. And you got to be ready. Stay low. That's right. Be ready. Stay low. All right, baby. We're going to work with it. There's a certain grace and order to baseball. Unlike the violent collisions of football and the frenzy of indoor soccer, baseball seems to have a certain maturity to it, especially in spring ball. So far, nobody's made an error. The team is undefeated. Everyone's relaxed. See how much better you slide with all that weight off with? <laughs> Pitcher Ed Whitson and second baseman Juan Benilla have come back in better shape. They've each lost nearly 15 pounds. I did a lot of running, a lot of uh, physical uh, during the winter, and uh, right now I'm very comfortable with the position I'm in, and uh, hopefully uh, go 100% and have a good season. I'm just trying to figure if, if it's going to be if I'm going to be strong enough or not, you know, without the weight and stuff. So I feel I feel much better right now. I'm running better. And right now I'm a little quicker. One thing you notice in Yuma is that the smiles come easy, along with optimism. Now you get the proper blend of experience and youth, and that talent seems to mesh together, and that's why we're legitimate contenders this year. With the home schedule we have starting out, we're quite optimistic. We like our ball club very much. I think we have enough arms out there to, to be very, very competitive. We have, I think, uh, as good a pitching staff as anybody. If there's ever a time that that we're going to win it, it's, it's going to be this year. I think if we stay away from injury and everybody has uh, just doesn't have, even have to have a super year, just have the, uh, a decent type of year where, of their, that their ability calls for, and we can do it. And if all that happens, who knows, this October we might be saying wait till next year for another championship. Didn't quite get all the way, but they made it to the World Series. All right, the Padres team and staff, they weren't the only San Diegans who made their way to Yuma for spring training. Fans made the trek to the desert to enjoy the games and intimate settings and all the sights the town had to offer. For those who couldn't make it themselves, we sent Larry Himmel to give them a tour. When it's springtime in Yuma, the Padres are the only game in town. But they're not the only attraction in the area. For example, you can go to prison. The Territorial Prison, built in 1876, offers daily tours. 
Bill Oach is your guide. They had a real simple rule. You tried to escape, they shot you. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Yeah. This better than our room at the Travelodge. <laughs> the prison, made from adobe, is worth seeing, and the tour lasts about a half hour. Bill, I got a question. Sure. Um, are we the best tour group you've ever had? I think so. <laughs> Another worthwhile side trip is to the Mexican border town of Algodones, located six miles from downtown Yuma. Although the merchandise that's for sale is similar to the things you'll see in Tijuana, Algodones is very small and its people very friendly. We make a deal. <laughs> Thank you, I make a sale. <laughs> and the best part of a trip to Algodones? No border waits. It makes for a nice afternoon. But at night, Yuma goes to the dogs. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, these are the dog days of spring. Yuma Greyhound Park has racing nightly Wednesday through Sunday with matinees on Saturday and Sunday. As a spring break destination, give Yuma three Fs for familiar, fun, and friendly. Larry Himmel, News 8, FYI. In 1993, the Padres were saying goodbye to Yuma, holding spring training for the last time in the only preseason home they had ever known since joining Major League Baseball. Some of the players even got a little nostalgic. But our Rick Powers found out the locals weren't thrilled about the team leaving, and they weren't the only group unhappy. Fans were upset about a team that lost a lot of big names and looked to be more worried about money than winning. The Padres spent a quiet spring in Yuma. Camp was relatively routine. Relax, straight leg break. Jim Riggleman settled in for his first full year as manager. But seething under the surface, there was rumbling. The people of Yuma are upset that the Padres won't be training in their city anymore. And plenty of fans are still upset at what many see as the dismantling of the club over the winter. Catcher Benito Santiago and reliever Randy Myers left as expensive free agents. And shortstop Tony Fernandez was dealt. Just a few of the good players let go because they made too much money. It's just a real shame to see, think about what they've done to the team. They've uh, stripped it down, and it just makes me feel as though they're, they're not really committed to winning. They just, just all they want to do is have a product, any product that'll work. Padre owners say they need to limit spending because they take in much less revenue than large market teams. So unless the Padres watch their pennies, owners say the club will continue losing millions and millions. But if the club can't compete on the field, chances are they'll finish down in the standings and out of the race. We must uh, operate it in some sort of a fiscal manner that, uh, that, that ensures that the franchise is going to be here and survives. I mean, that's, that's certainly even more important than winning, even though the winning is very, very important. But uh, right now, we're going through a period where uh, it's just somewhat difficult to put the same sort of caliber team and spend the same sort of money on players that uh, teams in New York and LA and Chicago are doing. But all some fans see is a lot of unfamiliar names and a lack of commitment to winning. Did you go to any less games because of because of what they've done? Yeah. Dropped my season tickets because of it. Last year when they traded away Lefferts, they just stated simply it's a business and it shouldn't be. I mean, they're gonna make money with good players and a good team. You know, that's a business part of it. No one knows the business part of it any better than general manager Joe McIlvain, who's been under the gun to find players and come in under budget. And then there's Riggleman, who's under the gun to win. It's a situation where uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to manage, and uh, whatever I get to manage, I'm, I'm going to be thrilled to death to, to take that group out there and compete. Players don't openly talk about the changes on the club, but with trade rumors swirling about certain guys for months, the subject has come up. I kind of, kind of try to stay away from it and try to keep as uh, good an attitude as I could and uh, been positive. But um, I think with all the negative things that are said, uh, obviously somewhere along the line you're going you're gonna to come across it. Uh, hopefully the fans uh, will stay supportive. I think we still have a lot of really good quality baseball players. But um, baseball is a business and we all understand that. And there are some financial restraints, so we just have to live with that. Now on the positive side, the Padres did keep three guys with very large salaries. And if the big three hit as well this year as they did last year, the Padre owners will certainly get their money's worth. The Padres have spent over $11 million, half their budget on Tony Gwynn, Fred McGriff, and Gary Sheffield. No doubt, some of the best hitters in the league. 
We have um, three guys look forward to having a good season and try to carry the ball club. Uh, we know we got a lot of new faces on the team. And this is on my second year over here. You know, I just have to take the attitude that I always had. Just go out and just let your um, performance do the talking. And, you know, with the three guys that we have, uh, we should be okay. Gwynn hits one high in the left center field, may drop, nobody getting near it, and it does drop. Tony Gwynn hopes a give up attitude doesn't develop around the clubhouse. You, know, you basically either suck it up and go out there and do what you're asked to do, or you can sit around and mope and grope and whine and cry, and, but it's not going to be, it's not going to do you any good. So the best thing to do is just go out there and try to do the best job that you can do and hope everybody feels the same way that you do. And hopefully you go out and you, you, you try to be competitive. It's coming up and there's a hard shot down the left field line base hit. There's no doubt the Padres will try. They're all pros. But the way it looks, this team will have trouble competing in a division with a lot of talent and other owners willing to spend a lot of money. At first glance, it looked like an ordinary day of baseball under the Yuma Tower. But of course it wasn't. It was moving day. But before the van pulled out, it was time for one final game. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Good. One final day to buy souvenirs. Anything with a date. Anything with a date. That doesn't it's, surprise. It's gone. The final program was a hot item, and a hot cook prepared final burgers. It was the final time to line the field. I think it'll be the same without a, base, a major league team here. Youngsters hoped for a final autograph, and then it was time for the Padres to take the field for the final time. It was also a time for remembrances, fond remembrances, because everyone we talked to loved Yuma. It's a wonderful facility, and it's just a fun place to come. It doesn't take you long to get here from San Diego. Tony Gwynn's going to miss it because he just recently found a good fishing spot. Twelve years, and I fished the Colorado River and some things out out and about and all this time there's bass right over here behind the, behind the complex over here on the golf course on the 17th hole. Other than fishing, there wasn't a whole lot for the players to do, but that cut down on distractions and made it a great place to train. Buzzy Bavese threw out one of the ceremonial first pitches today. He was the man who took the Padres to Yuma. I, I really am sorry. As I told someone this morning, I said, the only thing I can say about this to sum it all up is I'd have to thank them for the memories. 25 years of memories that after today complete Yuma's chapter in Padre history. Rick Powers, News 8, leaving Yuma. In 1994, the Padres unveiled their state-of-the-art new spring training home in Peoria, Arizona. Everything was first class. Sad thing is, for the players, it was probably better than what they'd get the rest of the season at home in San Diego. Hank Bauer toured the brand new digs and talked to a team with a lot of new faces on the field and in the dugout. The feeling around the team was that things were looking up. But, well, it didn't work out that way. It's as good as there is uh, anywhere around, and uh, you know, I think it's going to make a big difference not only for our Major League players, but for the minor league players, too. It's the Padres' new home for spring training, Peoria, Arizona, and it is... Pretty first class here. The, the whole place is first class. And it's dynamite, and it's got everything you want. Best ever. Package it up and take it to San Diego. The signature building of the Peoria Sports Complex, the new stadium. Capacity is 10,000. You got uh, 7,000 reserve seats, and then uh, the outfield, the hillside sold on the day of the game. There's about 3,000 you can get out there. And totally built, not quite yet complete, with the fan totally in mind. There's a little uh, nozzles up there, and it's a misting system that'll keep the fans cool and uh, you know, on those 110 degree days. As for the players, amenities, unmatched anywhere, including a spacious locker room. Huge. It was. It's incredible. An incredible training room and an extensive weight facility. Go fast. Come on, catch up. A central observation tower surrounds four full minor league fields and six minor league batting cages. The major leaguers, they enjoy two full and one half practice fields and four covered cages in case of rain. It's just the best I've ever seen. This is my 20th spring training. I've never seen anything like it. And if uh, for some reason all that doesn't translate into wins, hey, there's always the new mall across the street. So if the Padres are playing real bad. No. If the husband and kids want to watch practice, then the wives can go over. Well, the fans may have a reason to leave. No reason for the players to go anywhere. 
the 94 Padres. A lot is new, including a lot of new pitchers. A new crew of players such as uh, Joey Hamilton and Andres Baruman, uh, Robbie Beckett, uh, these guys, A.J. Sager, guys will be in camp with us and get a chance to show what they have. And they have a new coach, Sonny Siebert. He's been a real loyal guy through uh, the last 10 years in, in the Padre organization, and, and almost all these young pitchers have gone through Sonny. He's a very successful major league pitcher, and uh, he's had a lot of success with uh, these young guys as they've come through the system. There are new coaches that are old players, and there are old players with new outlooks thanks in part to the new complex. It's nice, no question. I mean, uh, pulling into the park this, this morning and, and seeing the people, you know, just eyes wide open and excited about the fact that we're here, it's, uh, it's nice. And there are even old new players here. They got a young nucleus. I think it's gonna be uh, better than most people think. Uh, got a chance to do some damage with this ball club with their lineup. All right, hips down, press up. But one thing about spring training, especially day one, there are the same old cliches. I think it's important uh, just for us to go out and do, do the best we can and, and, and try to improve. Uh, we just want to see some progression from, from this point to the end of the season, see that we've developed and progressed. I think everybody's coming in here with, a, with an attitude of where we're going, not where we've been. Let's get some things accomplished. The attitude in Peoria definitely upbeat. Considering last season, the only direction really the Padres could go. That same kind of rhythm when you take a fifth, same thing when you hit. I don't think we can get any lower than we got last year. And uh, some of the performances we had here last year is encouraging, I think. You know, Plantier, Derek Bell, Ricky Gutierrez, Trevor Hoffman. If it was rock bottom, then so be it. But, uh, you know, the, the point is, uh, you want to get to the top. There's no particular pride in finishing anywhere but there. Biff Roberts, he's returned to help him get there. He's not only been here before, but he's also been on the other side. When you trade Sheffield and McGriff, you, you kind of think that it's all over. I mean, what is the organization doing? It was a team we felt like we could just beat if we threw anybody out there on the field. There you go. Andy Moe. To the right side. That was then, and this is now. Now, springtime means optimism, but never have I seen it this high, especially after being that low. The thing that I try to emphasize is that this is a new year. You know, anything can happen. You know, give us a chance. Let us show you what we can do, and hopefully we can win you over. I think here we don't have that big ego trip. Um, it's going to be a real team-oriented game, and if we go out there and play hard every day with a lot of young guys and, and as hungry as they are, we're going to win a lot more than we lose, I think. Hank Bauer, News 8, from an optimistic Peoria, Arizona. It was a little better than 93, but the strike season shortened it. It was uh, ended early that year. Uh, no World Series in 1994, and the Padres at about a 400 winning percentage. In 1997, the Padres were coming off a great season and spirits were high. Rick Powers made the road trip and got very up close and personal with players, maybe giving us a glimpse of the future where we would find cameras everywhere. We also got a chance to talk to Ken Caminiti, coming off shoulder surgery and an MVP season. We're on the way to the park to watch baseball and talk baseball. What a job. We're anxious to get there, so no stopping for breakfast. But it's a little too early for a Whataburger. What a burger? We are here in baseball paradise. You know, the atmosphere in Peoria is very friendly. Hello, everybody. The players know I'm strictly there for business. Say hi to the kids. Hi kids, you should be here. Daddy's out uh, playing golf and having fun. You should be out here with him. He's not working. I don't know what he's talking about. I can even shoot myself doing my own reports. And I make sure we never miss an interview. So far in swing training, you went great. All right. I try to get a flavor by seeking out the fan. <gasps> Look, a fan. And one fan seeked me out. Can I be your son today? He so thought that would get him closer to the players. Kiddo. Leave that job to me. Oh, oh <laughs> scary. You almost feel like you're being spied on. <laughs> that one, at least that one, you know, it feels official. This one is like a little uh, yeah, spy camera uh, here. This is my personal. Oh, I thought they just gave you a little one because you were a small man. <laughs> <laughs> With cameraman Rick Corcoran's help, water, water. I won the admiration of one padre. Rick Powers can do it all. My motto, have camera, will travel to spring training.
I feel like a nerd, and it just doesn't feel comfortable. But for being the first day and swinging left-handed, I felt real good, and I didn't have any pain. And that's the important thing. It's pretty amazing. Just five months ago, doctors reattached the torn rotator cuff in Caminetti's left shoulder. They picked me to come back May, June, July. I'm here in pretty good shape. So my whole deal was I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna prove them that I'm gonna, I'm gonna play earlier and and not be stupid and play when it hurts. So far, Caminetti hasn't dived for any balls and isn't swinging as hard as he can. Still, it wouldn't be a shock to see Ken play in the first exhibition game on the 27th. Hopefully get into the spring training games as soon as possible. You know, I'd like to, as soon as they start, try and get in there and see as many at-bats as I can. As for being in the lineup on opening day? I really feel comfortable about that. So? You'll be less of a nerd, less of a nerd. Exactly. I mean, I always feel like a nerd the first couple of weeks of spring training. So. Bittersweet seeing Caminiti there. In 2005, CBS 8's Jamie Sire was in Peoria, where the team was on the verge of back-to-back -back years of making the postseason under the guidance of Bruce Bochy. We got a look at how the rotation was setting up, and Kyle Kraska had the chance to catch up with future Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman to see where his head was at heading into a contract season. And one thing we know for sure, his heart was always in San Diego. John, with the roster almost set and the lineup card pretty much written, there aren't too many positions up for grabs this spring. Despite a losing record with the Royals last season, Daryl May will be the Padres' fifth starter as he looks to bring wins to a slot that didn't have any after trading away Ishmael Valdez last year. Youngsters Justin Germano, Tim Stauffer, or knuckleballer Steve Sparks could possibly challenge later on, but for the time being, the job belongs to the lefty. He's got the experience. Uh, he gives us a... Uh... A left-hander in the rotation, which I like. Uh, he can change speeds. Uh, I've seen him throw, and uh, he's capable of putting together a, a, a good year. It doesn't matter what they say. I still got to go out and do my job, you know, regardless. You know, they brought a lot of other guys in here. You know, someone could step up and, and, and prove to be worthy of the fifth spot, you know. So I've got to, uh, I've got to keep pushing and keep doing, doing my work and working hard. He's been a San Diego icon for a dozen years and one of the best closers in baseball history. In 2005, Trevor Hoffman has two main goals. The first is a simple one. Just to stay healthy. Um, I know that uh, the bullpen is going to be really an integral part of our success and knowing that uh, Liney and Aki have solidified themselves and really gotten acclimated down the pen that uh, the old guy's got to hold up in at the bargain late in the game, so it's going to be, it should be a good year. He's as old as I am, you know. He <laughs> Is he? I'm telling you, you said that. Tell you, no, seriously, there's a guy, and I mean this honestly, should be in the Hall of Fame. What he has done for this club over the last 12 years, nobody that I know as a reliever has done as much. Huffy's second goal is security. Entering the final year of his contract, where he will be next year weighs on his mind. Sure, well, you know, I'd like to know where, where uh, I stand. I know how they feel about me. It's just a matter of making sure that uh, things work for both sides. They know I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to leave, and uh, uh, hopefully that uh, feeling's mutual. So you want to end your career as a San Diego Padre? No doubt. Uh, <laughs> hopefully pitch for a few more years, too, so it'd be a it'd be good, good thing to work out. And he did end up, of course, in the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks like this on CBS 8 Plus, just click on the News tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.